Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm leaving this here with you because this thing is... Okay. We'll, um, we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're recording. We hope you're having a wonderful Christmas Eve. We're going to be talking about the holidays and how it affects pilots on this podcast episode of Taking Off. Hello and welcome to the Taking Off Podcast. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. And it's the holidays. It is. It's uh, Christmas Eve is the date we're releasing this video. And because of the magic of pre-recording, it's actually you and I are not sitting here on Christmas Eve. But we're going to pretend like it's Christmas Eve. No, I'm at home. <laughs> yeah, so you're at home. I'm out in West Texas with my family. And uh, so Christmas Eve, uh, first of all, I want to say... Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, specifically, we're testing out a new sponsor. We've been talking about it some, and that's Abington Watches, and you've got yours on. If you're watching on YouTube, you actually get to see the GoPro. Um, but most, you know, this is a podcast, so we're focused on audio. But uh, Christy's got the white Abington uh, watch. It's the Amelia. The Amelia. It's beautiful. Yeah, so Abington created these watches because she couldn't find a good aviator watch uh, for her back 20 years ago. And she's created a line of them, and uh, they're they're great, very well made. And uh, for, for you pilots out there, if you have not gotten that gift, um, well, you're kind of late in the game, but you can always get, you know, a nice watch is a great late gift. And what's great about her is she also does men's watches. She does. So. I've got one, too. I've got the Jordan. And it comes with an E6B on the uh, outside, so you can you know rotate it around and everything. So oh, that's perfect. Pretty cool. So you can stay current on your E6B calculations. That's right. So <laughs> uh, very cool. All right. So Christmas Eve, the holidays. Christy, you're a an airline pilot now. What are the holidays like for an airline pilot? Just like any other day, <laughs> honestly. Um, so. Uh, Obviously, people want to get the holidays off, typically, to spend with their families, but that's not always possible. Um, we bid on our lines based on our relative seniority. And so, uh, fortunately, this year, I was able to get Christmas Eve and Christmas off. Okay. My seniority could hold those days off. And I've also got New Year's Eve and New Year's Day off. Last year, did you have to work them? Uh. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I think I was able to get Christmas off last year as well. Okay. All right. Very. But the year before, I was, I did did not get it off. I, you were like reserve or something. I was awful. on reserve. So you're just having to sit up there during Christmas. No, I wasn't on standby reserve. I was on the short call reserve, which is they give you a two hour call out basically, and uh, I in fact got called. <laughs> Imagine so, that. Yeah. Well, and I would think that Christmas Day is not a heavy scheduled airline day. It's Christmas Eve. It's the day after. You know, that's what I'm thinking. It's not super heavily scheduled, but you'd be surprised at the number of people that actually fly on those days. Because not everybody celebrates Christmas. So they oh, do have a, yeah. they've got a shortened um, schedule. So like instead of five flights to Dayton, there might only be two flights to Dayton. But those flights typically fill up. Oh, interesting. Well, I yeah. guess the way they do it, every flight's going to typically fill up. They're eh, ish. Ish. It just yeah, it it really depends honestly. But I was surprised at how many people actually fly on Thanksgiving Day, on Christmas Day, mm. et cetera. Um, but that's just I think because the number of uh, legs that they have going to a particular destination has been shortened, so they've got to condense everybody to those like one or two flights. Well, when my kids were younger, we would actually travel on Christmas. Usually, traditionally, we would drive somewhere uh, nearby San Antonio, um, New Braunfels, something like that, and enjoy Christmas Day like somewhere because there were no crowds. It was, it was a lot of fun. So we did that a couple years in a row. Well, I found it very interesting, too. Um, I flew with a captain recently who actually worked on Thanksgiving. He had what's called a lost day um, in one of the, I think it was Corpus Christi, 
And that means that you get in the day before, you don't fly at all on that lost day, and then you fly out the next day. So you're there for basically two days. And uh, on Thanksgiving Day, that was their lost day. He said they were actually able to find a couple of restaurants that were open to go to. Denny's. Um, not no, not Denny's. It was actually like a nice steakhouse, and he said it was packed. Oh wow! They must. It must be an advertised kind of thing for the community there. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he was really surprised. I was surprised by that. Did you work this past Thanksgiving? I did not. So you were able to get off for that as well. Yes. How how often do they have these lost days? Um, I mean they're not uncommon. Um, we saw a lot of it. This the year for on Thanksgiving just because of the reduced load. So they they would start a trip on Tuesday or Wednesday and not finish until like Friday or Saturday. And so they would have a lost day somewhere for Thanksgiving because they had shortened the number of flights that were going out. Can you um, can you ask for a lost day? So you're you're flying to Orlando or something and you want to have a day at Universal or whatever? You don't ask for it, but you can bid for it. Like if there's a line or something that shows, oh, so a lot of people do Rapid City Lost Days, Rapid City, South Dakota, because they want to go see Mount Mount Rushmore. Rushmore Yeah. Yeah. And um, Crazy Horse. The Badlands and stuff like that. And so if you look on the bid packet and you go, oh, cool, this this one's got a Rapid City Lost Day, so you can actually bid for that line. Ah. Um, And if your seniority can hold it, then you'll get it. Oh, that's very cool. So what, what are what is a lost day bid you've gone after? Uh honestly, I don't. Oh, you haven't done that. Yeah. I, I don't really do the I mean, I've done lost days before, but not by choice. Maui. Yeah, no, no. There's the, no no uh um, envoy flights to Maui? No one seventy fives uh going to uh Maui at this time, but this may, time. maybe in the future. Yeah. Well they you know, Southwest started doing the seven thirty sevens. Um, I guess they had to have special uh, 730, a certain model of 737 to do that trip. Right. So we we actually went to Hawaii. Um, it was myself and Kevin and a bunch of our friends. We went to Hawaii at the beginning of November. Right. And um, we kind of did our, we do a Friendsgiving every year. Mm-hmm. And the reason we do that is because we're all pilots and some of us work on Thanksgiving. And then, of course, we're visiting family and doing stuff on, you know, um, with our relative families and stuff on, on Thanksgiving. So we usually, earlier that month, we'll get together and we'll celebrate together and we'll do a Friendsgiving. This year we did Friendsgiving in Hawaii. Nice. Well, we flew from Dallas to Los Angeles and then we did Los Angeles to uh, Kauai and we were on an A321 on that flight. An from, A321, all right. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I had not done that before. I've always been... A 767, 777. Seven, yeah, yeah, 777 or a 78 or something, you know, larger with more capacity. Um, but, I mean, obviously there were no issues on that 321. There's a reason why they certified them for it, so... Yeah. Well, okay, what does go into the certification for the, uh, the Jets... Uh, going overseas like this. I know that they have to have some crazy ETOPS certification. And what is ETOPS for um, those who ex- aren't pilots? It's, uh, oh gosh. <laughs> now, but I quizzed you here. I know, you put me on the spot. Well, we don't do ETOPS. Right. So You're, you're a regional j- airline, so I'm, I'm pushing you on non-regional issues. It's like... Uh, extended twin. Oh gosh. Oh, oh don't look, look it up. up. It's okay. I'm going to have to look it up now. No, cause it's going to bother me. Cause I recently did look it up. Uh, I, it bu- bugs me that I don't extended range twin operations performance standards. You're pretty close. Yeah. I knew it was like, I knew the T stood for twin and then operations, but I couldn't remember. I should have known it was. Extended. So the 747 does not follow and follow fall into that. No. Cause it's, you got all the, engines. you got four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen for New Year's for you? Um, probably a quiet New Year's at home. I'm, you know, it's funny. I'm really a simple person. I'm not a super flashy. I mean, you've seen my car. <laughs> you know, uh, I I like things that I find value in are quality time with my friends and my family. You know, the people that I love. So, um, it's really just going to be celebrating those moments with my people. Um, we'll probably hang out with our friends at somebody's house here in the DFW area since I've got it off work. 
Mm -hmm. That's probably what's going to happen. Well, nice. And, I, you know, honestly, I'm not the big shocker here. I'm not the party type. So I can't remember the last time I actually stayed up to midnight on New Year's Eve. I mean, we usually stay up until midnight. Um, I mean, we fly all the late flights anyway. So um, our schedule, we've kind of got that swing shift Mm -hmm. body clock because that's when we do most of our flying. Um, But... Uh, we usually, like I said, we don't, we don't party hard. We get together, there's laughs and we usually talk, reflect on the previous year and talk about the upcoming year. And we just hang out. We watch airplanes on TV. Yeah, we are, we are those people. Okay. Let's, you know, we're at the end of the year here, 2023, and let's look back at the channel for 2023. What stands out to you, um, this past year for taking off? Um, the envoy stuff that we've been doing we've finally been able to do that yeah that that's pretty cool um and that was a big deal for those who don't quite understand so a atp a, a 121 pilot has a lot of rules that the fa puts on as far as filming um what they're doing and everything else so it's an easy way to get into a lot of trouble and you're reticent about that because you don't want to risk uh flying the bird you love the 175 and um, so what we did is um, you gave me the contact. I reached out to marketing at Envoy, talked to them, but eventually that led us to the chief pilot. Is that his title? No, uh, the director of operations. Director of operations. Flight, yeah, the director of flight ops. And they were they were very okay with it. And yeah. that surprised me, and I think it surprised you. Well, they, yeah, they've had individuals previously that, right. like Swain, for right. example, did videos in conjunction um, with Envoy. But it's, yeah, there's a lot of FAA rules, but then there's a lot of company rules. Like, so for example, like mainline American Airlines would not let me do the same kind of things with them as Envoy does, even though Envoy is kind of under the blanket of right. FAA. It's like this weird dynamic, but either way, um, so all the stuff that we do with Envoy, we send to them first for right. approval. We make changes as necessary if we need to. Sometimes we don't yeah. need to, and sometimes and, and we the, do. The changes that we've had to make so far have been very minor. It's like, hey, make sure you just add a label here, yeah, or you know, qualify the with a, a a text on screen here. Right, exactly. I mean, that's really it. We've never done anything that's violated anything. In fact, you've pushed me to do more, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> right, right. Um, because I, I just, it's not worth the risk. I, the reason why I do it is I think it's really cool for people aspiring to go into the airlines to see kind of the inside, you know, what we do from the inside or kind of things from our purview. Because for, for a few reasons, one, I was that person a few mm-hmm. years ago. I was the dreamer and now I'm the doer. And I want to be able to give that back or pay it forward to people who either want to or can't. Right. So I think it's a really cool way to to do that. Also, um, there's a lot of um, misinformation out there about airlines, about the regional airlines, um, and about flying in general. And I think it I, we've been given this really unique platform to be able to speak on. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to clarify those misconceptions and and really show what it's like to you know fly for a regional airline and. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I find a lot of satisfaction in being able to help show other people what it's like. Yes. And I'm very thankful for Envoy, uh, doing this. And I'm really kind of surprised that American, I know United doesn't either. Uh, the majors do not allow their pilots to kind of do the YouTube or social media thing very much. And I think they're miss, I know it's hard to control and it's, it takes some work to control it, but the payoff is huge in PR and marketing for these co- and for recruiting for these companies. So I don't know why the majors don't do it. Um, well, I'm, you got to realize too, they don't need to. They like people are already coming to them already. You know what I mean? Um, they they don't need that type of PR. They don't need that. They're getting all you know bunches of applications just on their own, be- just by the fact that they are a, a legacy airline. You know, it's really, in my opinion, it's the regional carriers and the um, LCCs, the low-cost carriers and whatnot, that need the PR 
that, yeah. okay. you know, to drive more pilots in. Well, but I mean, you go back to one of the original, um, the early showing of how powerful social media was, was the United viral video of the, the guitar player whose guitar was busted and United wouldn't do anything. So he made a song and put it on YouTube and it created one of the first, you know, marketing crisis, PR crisis for a major airline. Yeah. Social media can be so powerful because it just reaches a, yeah. a huge audience. And I think that could be one of the reasons why the, the legacies don't do anything. They're scared of it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Exactly. It's because you you take things. I mean, look what happens in just normal media. You you take little things out of context and, you know, blow it up into something that it really isn't. And it's just so hard to control. Yeah. And that's why with our videos that we do, that's why I, we don't put out very many with Envoy because it takes a lot of time and energy and effort to get it right, to send it to them, to get it approved, and then to get it edited properly and published. Well, as I look back on the year for taking off, we started January with um, actually our biggest month ever as far as views. And you know, we did some news stories and things like that. And at the time, I also uh, did nine days of shooting and teaching what we called flight camp that I still haven't re released. I've got so much uh, footage in the can. But um, Dan, I you overcommit, in my opinion, <laughs> to a lot of things. You're like, we're going to do this and this and this and this, not realizing that you're just one person with a limited number of hours in a day. It's not that I overcommit. I would rather shoot it and have it in a can and be able to edit it later when I have time than just not do it at all. But I feel like it loses luster after time. Like, for example. Flight camp won't. Well, so I was thinking about it. It's like with some of the Envoy videos and stuff. I, like the 145 video, mm -hmm. I shot six months ago. Yeah. You know, and um, I haven't really shot anything else because I'm, I'm, you know. But I would rather have it in the can because like. The holidays may open up and or I may get another editor or this or that. And if okay. I have it, I can do something with it. Okay, let me put this scenario out here for you, okay? I shoot a bunch of videos similar to the 145 video and we get on, we, we expend time and energy and effort doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say it flops. You know what I mean? As now, far as like no views? Right, yeah. Like it wasn't that interesting. It didn't get done. You know, people just weren't really that interested in it. Well, now I've got seven more videos lined up that are, you know, the same. Well, That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm, what okay, I would so like to do is, is I'd like to put it out and let the let it get felt out before expending that time and energy and so effort on it. from a network point of view, because this is the world I, I live in, um, you know, what happens, the networks won't ever, well, very rarely will just do a one-off and, and see how it does. Because nothing ever the very first thing ever gets its audience. You, right. you got to build time. So like take, let's go back to the nineties and Seinfeld. Seinfeld was greenlit for four episodes for that first season. That's all they did. Four episodes. Right. And so they, they did those four and it still wasn't that great. Office was same way. Yeah. The first season of the office was they hard to watch. They thought it would be the only season that they did. They were really surprised it went to season two. So, you know, so you have to have more than one because it takes time. And, and most of the network executives understand that. And, you know, I would encourage you to shoot it because I can always edit it. I can't edit it if you didn't shoot it. Well, yeah. I and mean, so I'd rather have it in the can. But all that's to say is that, I mean, you, you say I overcommit, but we are averaging four videos a week well, on the channel. Right. But you're bringing on more. You know, like yeah. more stuff. And that's what I mean by the overcommitting because like, yeah, OK, so the example with the office and whatnot, you're right. They only they did that. They shot that first season. They kind of felt it out. It didn't do great. So they went ahead and shot season two and then it started taking off, you mm -hmm. know, um, but you have to have. But they were releasing those episodes every week, you know, for a season. And for me, I look at it and I go, OK, if I release one Envoy video every six months, it's never going to pick it's up. It's not going to pick off. up. I agree. Now, we did release one in the summer, the paint shop one. So we're at about one every three months, not right, six months. Exactly. I just want to put that out there. But <laughs> no, I agree. And now here's the thing, too, is that a flying video and certain videos, I can only edit because my my editors I have on staff here at S Films don't know aviation. 
the problem with the 145 is they didn't know the difference between a 170 and a 175, a 145 and a 175, a CRJ 700 versus a 145. Right. And although I kind of can tell them that, if you go, the reason why you go, well, just tell them that and they know to search CRJ 700. Well, the problem is, is that you can search CRJ 700 and it's going to show, it, it might give you a 145. It might even give you a, you know, 747 or yeah. a Cessna. <laughs> yeah, and that's what the and that's why the news gets it wrong so often when they're when they're doing stuff is because they just do a Google search. Well, believe it or not, the internet's wrong sometimes. What? Yeah, I know, crazy. But um, anyway, all that's to say is that uh, I had my editor begin the 145 video that you you shot, and I had to get in there and do all the B roll and everything else. Right. Because, and then you got busy. And then I got busy. Right, exactly. So, and that's what I'm saying about the like overcommitting and stuff is I want to make sure that I, I'm giving or getting stuff that can be, I don't want to say easily edited, but it's hard because it's such a, a niche, you know, community. Yeah. And, and for our listeners who are out there, uh, go to YouTube, leave a comment. Um, do I overcommit too much? Are, are we making too many videos? Should I cut back? You know, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on it. So uh, go well, to the channel and leave me a message. And I want to clarify, it's like, it's not even that we're making too many videos and stuff like that. Like, you know, taking off is not your full-time job. You no. have, you have a full-time production company that you run and so you have a lot which is admirable i mean you're you have a very successful business which is great and um so your focus is and should be your your production company um but then after that you know taking off and stuff that's all gravy you have to have like spare time to do that but again you're just one person i would say if i could find the one person that i could bring on staff to help with aviation production, whether it's editing or shooting, I would be very open to bringing them on. I tried that at the beginning of 2024 and Wait. have the and ha have the person work remotely. That didn't work. You mean 2023? I'm sorry, tw at the beginning of 2023. I was going to say. Ooh. I'm looking. I am prophesying. <laughs> I, had, I had somebody. It just didn't work out that whoever it is needs to be here in our studios in Fort Worth. Yeah. And um, so that, that, you know, so that's a tall ask, you know, a, a, an aviation person who is a full-time editor shooter um, and, and they're in North Texas, that's right. just going to be hard, but you know um, we'll just have to see how, 2024 goes but yes we're overloaded right now on the aviation editing and i'm staying up every night editing stuff and and part of it is is even not just taking off s films has moved into the aeroverse which is just launched and we are contracted to do some of the original programming for that right exactly so now you're even fuller than yeah. what you were a couple months ago and it's not it's not easy editing um no. whereas like in the hangar that's easy editing all i'm doing is multi-cam you know just hardly any of uh, content editing and then just going in and throwing in B-roll to emphasize and cover the things that we're talking about on the show. Um, the podcast, this is easy stuff because all I'm going to do is throw the GoPro, which quit at earlier. So I'm just going to have a picture up during that time. But, you know, I'm not doing any massive work for this. I can prep a, a podcast in 30 minutes. Yeah. I can do an in the hangar episode in an hour to two hours. So um, what I try to do is I try to get, you know, 15 videos preloaded, but I got behind with Arrow versus uh, demand that we had doing and also my company. So, yeah. All right. Am I doing too much? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so, all right. So <laughs> I just started with how 2023 t started. You know, uh, we did have our first multi-million or we had two videos in January that, that went over a million. John Denver. John Denver was one of them. So I'd like to see more of those videos. We, we've got a list. We went, created a spreadsheet of all the, the uh, you know, celebrity crashes that we want to cover. Coming up soon is going to be, I'm going to cover um, Leonard Skinner and do a deep dive on that. Yeah, I've got some really cool ones. I say cool. That's such a bad I know. It, it, we understand what you mean. Very interesting is what I should say. I've got some interesting ones that um, I'm going to be doing as well this next year. Um, I've already started writing the scripts for those. And then we just have to 
record and edit them. <laughs> yeah. And well, now th- on those, I can have my editors do the work because it's, it, I don't have to do the editing on, on those. Right. Now, I did on John Denver and I have on most of them, but um, those I can hand off. Okay. So, gotcha. Um, also, Jim Croce, we, I want to do, um, there, there's a bunch. Oh, and here's, you know, in the same kind of uh, feel, I'd like to do some that aren't just celebrity crashes, but maybe well known aviation incidents. Like, I yeah. was thinking we could do uh, a video on the 9 11 hijackers and how they went through flight training. Ooh, that's spooky. It's spooky, but it's, you know, it created, it's just like a crash, you know, it right. created a bunch of n- new rules because of that. There was a chain of events. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to kind of even get into maybe some of that kind of stuff in 2024. Okay. So we'll see. Interesting. And then, uh, then the year progressed and, uh, you know, I went to Sun and Fun, uh, you were flying and I went with Brian and we only went for a day and a half and I shot just a little bit of stuff. It wasn't a big deal. But then, you know, we came around to the summer and Air Venture. We did our second full year of being there the whole time shooting in the hangars on location at the Flying Eyes booth. I really enjoy that. Yeah. So that's and we we shot. I'm, you know. Well, I mean, we just we're still I think recently I just put out the last one. So, you know, we went six months of in the hangars from Air Venture. Yeah, that's crazy. And then, um, and then I went to Reno Air Races again. You were on envoy duty, but uh, Dean at Flying Eyes likes having us at the booth, so may even do that in 2024 for Sun and Fun. We may do something there. And here's something I'm thinking about, and I would love to have again your input out there, you guys listening. What if we set up this podcast setup, a table at the Flying Eyes booth, and did these podcasts instead of like full on in the hangars at Sun and Fun. We'd still do in the hangars at Air Venture, but I was thinking of doing this setup for Sun and Fun. What do you think? Let me know in the comments at YouTube. That'd be fun. I keep trying to get to Sun and Fun. The problem is that um, I use my vacation time every year to go to Air Venture. Yep. And, um, and also we try to take like, you know, family vacations as well. Right. So it, I wind up running out of um, time to take for Sun and yeah. Fun and Reno and all of that. And then, of course, this next year, I don't know exactly when yet, but sometime in the spring, I'll be going to captain upgrade training. So right. I got to work around that as well. Yeah. And so that, that'll be out. That was one of the things I was heading towards is now let's look for, uh, ahead to 2024. Yeah. We're going to start with another in the hangar studio taping, probably the first weekend of February. Um, by the time this is airing, I will have established the date for that. I haven't yet at the time of the recording of this. Right. So um, it'll probably be that first weekend of February. Yeah. Okay. That works. And I think you're so funny, by the way, you and your your clickbait, Christy doesn't want to be a captain. It's not that I don't <laughs> want to be a captain. She's referring to the uh, podcast uh, that oh we released gosh. in November. Because people were, I like, I scrolled through some of the comments and I just, I lost brain cells. Just even I'm sorry. Thinking about the responses. It's not that I don't want to be a captain. I actually really do want to be a captain. It's just, um, you know, it's People don't understand, like non-airline individuals don't understand the seniority thing and why I've been a, a first officer for so long. That's, Did I, I? I didn't think in the thumbnail I said you don't want to be a delay. You do. I thought I said you the did. word delay captain. Nope. You said Christy doesn't want to be a captain. Oh, there we and go. And I was like, here we go. Um, so. Well, good. I'm glad we got some uh, reaction from the <sighs> audience. Oh yeah. No, I do want to be a captain. I think that Captain Christy would be really cool. Uh, and Captain Christy is going to be cool, but... Um, it's just that I've also really enjoyed the seniority and not only that, it's just building for me too, it was building that experience level as Mm -hmm. a first officer, um, so that I could take it into the captain role. By the time I upgrade to captain, I mean, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have well, I mean, right now I have well over the requisite hours to be a captain, but every flight I take every, every day that I fly, I build that you know toolbox of experience a little bit more and that's really really what i want in addition to the perks of better seniority right now and and everything else so okay so 2024 we'll see captain christy um in the um air up there and we'll 
have even more videos on taking off. No, oh, we'll be finally editing the ones we shot in 2023 and posting them in 2024. Yeah, I'll be I'll be my favorite captain. I'll be well into captain by the time you're I able post to, any videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it's not like I'm going weeks without posting a video. I mean, I'm still keeping to the schedule of at least three a week. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, you know, I haven't really done, in some regards, I'd like to see doing more news, aviation news, and I just haven't had time. Yeah. No. I I, I know. Shocker. Yeah. I was going to say, exactly. I mean, I've been trying to schedule, like, one of the things that I really, really think would be super cool would be to do a video in conjunction with Envoy in the flight simulator. I know. And every time I reach out to you, hey, give me your schedule. Let me know what it's like so that we can start planning it because we I have to do it in advance. I give you like a two-hour window here and there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. All right. Well, that's uh, that's that's what it looked like in 2023, and that's what it's going to look like for 2024. In 2024, Christy's going to look into advanced cloning techniques so that we can get two of Dan. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, the new sponsor, Abington. We're testing the sponsorship out. So if you want to get a watch or if you want to buy a gift, please, please go to uh, the YouTube description for this video. And I'll have a link that will automatically put our code with the discount in there. If you click that link, go and shop and and buy an Abington watch. It would help us and um, also other sponsors like Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com, Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com, uh, Z Vision, the brightest taxi and landing lights out there, 67 designs. That GoPro is sitting there on a 67 design uh, arm. So, uh, flying eyes, flying eyes, use our discount code taking off all caps one word for 10% off. And we really appreciate you guys and your support this past year. Don't forget, if you subscribe and we hit 100,000, Chrissy is going to jump from an airplane. an airplane. Oh, I'm going too. Absolutely. But I'm going to go solo this time. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.